Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Catechumens Depart. I, as usual, am Eric Anderson. And I am, as usual, Father Mark Kozak from Assumption of the Holy Virgin Mary Parish in Greater South Philadelphia. Is, is there a lesser South Philadelphia? There could be. Yeah. I think that there might be. It's like an abandoned lot or something. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> it's that old it's that old oil tower by the church or whatever that thing is that the deacon knows what it is it used to hold oil it's an oil tank and yeah 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 it's, i'm maybe not sure what that is either <laughs> we have a water tower next to our house so nah. yeah. yeah welcome back everybody um thank you for joining us as always hope you're staying warm it is uh something like 16 degrees here and uh spitting ice things from the sky a bit i hear you have snow father we have 30 we are at 31 degrees and we had snow last night about three and a half inches in in newcastle delaware where i uh, abide with matushka and um supposed to get the ice and everything else in, in another day or so hey it seems like february it's february <laughs> hey we're gonna round out a year pretty soon i know Oof. It's like amazing. Our fan is stalwart. It, our, our, thank you, fan. Thank, thank you, fan, for thank stalwartly you. standing by us for our almost a year of rambling. What are we on? Like 36? 35 or 36, yeah. Not bad. Well, hey, we're going to try something different this week. Um, we got a question from the fan. Well, one of two. One of, one two. of the fan. It's, uh, and uh, he passed along this video uh, from St. Sophroni of Essex that he would like for us to discuss. Do you want to, because you met the St. Father, do you want to talk a little bit about who he was before we launch into the video? Um, he was a disciple of St. Siloan of Mount Athos, mm -hmm. and who was a very holy saint in the early part and middle part of the 20th century. And St. Sophroni founded a monastery in Essex, uh, north and east of, of London, made up of a multinational group of people. Mm -hmm. So you had people there come from all over Europe, come to, mon to the monastery and, and uh, be with um, um, now St. Um, uh, Sophroni. So they would have their services in uh, Slavonic and French and Greek and English. Oh, cool. Which would be, which was very interesting. So their main services were done in an 11th century um, uh, church down the road from the monastery. There were two monasteries. It was a, uh, it was a female monastery about four or five miles away from the male monastery. Okay. So they would come together in prayer, and um, uh, many many books came out of there, and of course the writings and, and the sayings of Saint um, uh, Siloan of. Uh, Mount Athos came out of there, and um, he was quite an extraordinary person. Mm. Uh, just uh, um, and his disciples continue. You so, met him, did you not? I did. I met him in 1988. I was up there. Uh, Matushka and I were visiting England, me for the first time, yeah. and my the home of my great grandparents and, and, mm. and other relatives, and so um, got to drive out to. Essex, which was beautiful, beautiful countryside, perfect place to put a monastery for uh, um, folks and um, beautiful, beautiful services. They're the they're one of the monasteries that they use the prayer rope for um, services. Oh, cool! So, uh, so they would do um, uh, uh, for um, uh, sixth hour. We were only there a couple of days. Um, mm -hmm. They did sixth hour and then they did 500 knots so they would do 100 in each of the four languages they used oh wow which was really cool that is cool so a different monk or a different nun would do would do the you know do the um do the prayers and so did they just sort of like go up and to the clearos or something and do them out loud yeah they did them out loud yeah cool <coughs> mm -hmm. oh that's awesome yeah, yeah. um I was reading a little bit about him. He began his life as an artist. Um, well, there you go. Ah, poor guy. Um, he wisely 
uh, encountered the church and just abandoned that silliness. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess it, well, he was in Paris and uh, in the early 20th century, which is, you know, where all of Picasso and all of that was happening sort of at that time. And uh, he had a very intense religious experience. And I think that he felt that the art that he was pursuing at the time was not an adequate way of mm, experiencing or addressing that divine experience. So he went towards monasticism after that. Uh, so we have a video and this, I'm just gonna play it. It's a little long, it's about five minutes, but I thought we would play it for you guys so that you know, we get to hear uh, St. Sophronius very recently canonized, and just in 2019, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not often that we get to hear a saint's voice. You know, it's a very recent, uh, recent thing. So I'm just going to play this um, for you guys. We're going to share. We're going to go here. Как нам переродиться и все это великое в человеках считать за мерзость пред Богом? Каким образом стать человеком, который не является рабом ни гордости, ни тщеславия? Не носитель желания попирать брата своего через любовь к Христу, которая распрята в этом мире. И за этот путь ненавидит наш мир. Но это не путь князя мира сего. В нашу эпоху спасение стало я бы сказал, труднее, чем раньше. Раньше свидетельство Бога, творящего невероятные чудеса, были повседневным явлением. Как Петр, простой рыбак, без образования, стал вдруг учителем человечества. Дал ему Господь ваш молитвы своей воскресать даже мертвых. Есть предсказания святых отцов IV века, где они говорят, что в последние времена Бог скроет от людей, от верных своих, где они. Не будут творить чудеса и сами будут ощущать себя как бы покинутыми Богом. В состоянии истошания это есть единственный верный путь, как пишет, путь слезный. Самая главная борьба со страстью гордости. Все, которые хотят властвовать над людьми, они погрешают и понимают власти, данные от Бога. Сам Бог не хочет властвовать над человеком, чтобы человек в свободе своей любви к Богу определился как Бог. И моя молитва о том, чтобы вы послушали слово старца. Путь святых – это путь плача любви, где любовь, там есть плач. А где нет любви, там нет плача. Даже в великих страданиях и муках, скажем, во время войны, когда 
мы были свидетелями всякого рода издевательств над человеком побежденным. Когда садизм стал повседневностью во всем мире, и там нет плача, я даже слышал о борьбе, о способе борьбы издевательствами от, от победителей. Ненавидеть их всем существом. И эта ненависть уменьшит боль. И уж с ним ничего не сделать. Понимаете? А Господь говорит, любите враги ваши. А ты ты любви плат к согрешающим. Плат за мучителей, которые не познали путь к спасению, путь жизни, истинной по образу Божию. Cool. All right. All right. Well, so that's heavy, right? Uh, um, rather, as as the English would say, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quite then. Um, Quite. Mm, this is talking about uh, well, specifically, uh, the question was about kind of the central core of this. Um, the Holy Fathers, where he says the Holy Fathers says, basically say that God hides people's spiritual condition from them in, in the later times. And uh, they, they feel forsaken. And the only way is out of that or through that is to turn from pride towards sort of the way of tears, which I understand to be kind of weeping for the world. Is that, is that a fair summary of that core bit? It is, but we have to be we have to be careful with with this. The yeah. the other the other big part is loving your brother. Yeah, because he starts with that, he ends with that. The people that were tortured during the war, and um, um, he says a man in in the first or, or second um, uh, uh, slide. Um, he says a man is someone that loves his brother mm -hmm. and takes care of his brother. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that would be a woman too. I mean, there's no the man is being used. A human being. A human being is someone that takes care of their brothers and sisters. Um, and it is the love of Christ, the crucifixion of Christ, which is what the world hates. Yeah. And yeah. if we hate, then we're of the world. Mm -hmm. If we love through Christ's crucifixion, and, th and then I think, be you know, adding to that his descent into hell and his resurrection, mm -hmm. then we love all. Yeah. Um, but now, the prophecies and everything. I'm not an I'm I'm a ex not an expert. I'm a um, knowledgeable person about prophecies. I was telling this to someone uh, uh, the other day. Not from the Orthodox side. Well, I was in the beginning when I was when I was 20 and I was reading everything and reading <laughs> Seraphim Rose and and yeah. reading all kinds of interesting stuff. And but I I spent three plus years as a evangelical Protestant reading Hal Lindsey and other interesting folks from the late 19, uh, from the mid uh, 19, uh, 1970s yeah. about prophecies. And yeah. then I learned how, when I became Orthodox, I learned how prophecies work. Mm -hmm. And yes, the fourth century, uh, fourth and fifth century monks and, and nuns talked about um, uh, the, the tears uh, uh, drying up and, and, the appearance, I think, might be a better word of God leaving, God hiding from us. God doesn't really hide from us. This is the, yeah. this is, um, 
we have to be so careful with with that, and then we have to be careful with the prophecy then. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm not saying it's not the it, it's you know the the latter times haven't come. I'm not saying that yes or no. I'm not a certain right. I'm not a saint. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I would I wouldn't disagree with I, I would not totally agree with him about there being no more miracles. I think there are miracles. Yeah, there are witnesses or martyrs for the faith. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen many miracles in, in my life, you know, mm. that uh, cannot be explained by anything scientific or rational in, mm-hmm. in our in our culture. Um, does that mean that we're moving towards the uh, the last times? Maybe we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, that's um, a that's a funny thing. I mm-hmm. think that I I kind of stumbled over that piece. I. Th- think it may have been like a translation thing too because I was reading that carefully in the subtitles as we went <coughs> pardon me and and oh I lost your video father you're just you were iPad 4 for a moment sorry sorry about that somebody called me someone someone called me it's I don't know what they were doing <laughs> I don't know why it's connected to my computer don't don't ask me <laughs> it's the apple beacon here <laughs> um there was some funky translational things, I think, too, in that because there was like a comma in a goofy place. And I sort of took that to mean that the way I, I read it, because I watched it a couple times now or three times, I think. I think it, it, it I think that it was saying that God will hide people's spiritual condition from them is as I think having watched it a few times, what that rather than God hiding from them, mm-hmm. it's that. He, I, it, I kind of took that to be that he will hide their spiritual condition from them and the tears will dry up because then it, I don't know, maybe it's like harder to repent. I think that goes back to our, uh, our talking about, uh, you know, our increasingly uh, materialistic machiney world, you know, it, mm-hmm. it, we've grown farther and farther and farther away from, uh, like you said, to be a true human being is to be one who loves, and in our world, to be a human being is to be one who consumes and gratifies one's passions. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, at least uh, in my read, and and, qua- and qualifies and 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 uh, obtains things by credit, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um. But um. Yeah, I, I I agree. I don't I don't think he meant God hides from us. Yeah. But you know what God does with our spiritual with our spiritual lives and explaining this to us, you know, that's this is a great mystery of the church. I mean, you know, I've been a spiritual father for a, a long time and, and I'm still learning something. I told a spiritual daughter of mine the other day. Um, I, I learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. Every time I talk to somebody. Yeah. You know, it's not like some kind of, you know, I, I know something. Um, uh, there's something new that I learned, something. Um, uh, uh, and these are good things. You yeah. Know, these are good things. Um, and to have the tears dry up and, and help that towards repentance. Well, anything that will help us towards repentance is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Tears are an interesting subject in, in the church. We have had many saints who have had the gift of tears, and that's how it's put. Right. You know, by, Which is like by, a funky uh, phrasing, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, it's for like us. the gift. Yeah, it is for us. Yeah, but it's the gift of tears. So they're crying for the world. They're not crying for themselves. Right. You Which know, is all you, of like what yeah. Saint Siloan was talking about, right? In, exactly in, what he was talking about. Yeah, and he might he might have had the gift of tears. I'm not remembering too well now. I think my, so. Uh, I think in he my did research. I think I yeah. remember reading that, and so that's who uh, uh, Saint Sophroni is uh, talking, uh, about. talking about. Yeah, because yeah, that seems like a at least in again like in in our world of of please myself all the time like who wants tears right that seems like really weird um but then it's like well i think that i really uh i liked towards the end he talks about um 
you know, how, how people are, which we've talked about, I think a bit, uh, power is what people are seeking, right? People, increasingly people are seeking uh, power over one another and yeah. in, in our world, right? That's becoming the base currency. Um, and and he says that's basically the opposite of God's way, right? They're, they think, right. well, I will achieve power and I will become the, the strongest or whatever. And it's like mm-hmm. God's power is, is through his weakness in, in descending and condescending to us. And then also in allowing us to our freedom. Well, and God's power is um, the um, unilateral unceasing love that he has for us. Mm-hmm. Um, which gives us free will yeah and and gives us the path towards theosis which he talked about yeah and um without that wonderful love of god then we would be you know 75 percent water and 25 percent whatever we are and you know dumb meat yeah yeah, I. Uh... So, and and the moment that we look at a person that way, because we're not looking at them in in made in the image and likeness of God, no right. matter who they are or what they did. Yeah. Um. Then we 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 walk away from God. Yeah. You know, we're taking a step away from God. Um. Which feels like right now to me in our sort of current cultural moment, almost like the inevitable outworking of the way that our culture has developed, right? It's it mm-hmm. in, in in its sort of scientific uh, manifestation, like in that you and I are just like meat creatures with more or less power mm-hmm. and there's almost no way of like love is not actually meaningful in that like i don't even know if there like there's no i think that's probably why there is this conflation of love and and lust uh, in our mm-hmm. world too is because lustful copulatory thing is mm-hmm. that can be reduced to um material mm-hmm and love, and it can be re- and it can be re- re- reduced to power, or abuse over and, an, or yeah. abuse over over another human being. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it can be reduced to all kinds of things that are are um, uh, not what it was made for. Yeah. yeah, and but that's almost that's all you ever hear talked about. Really, you don't. At least I don't. And and I really. That whole like hatred of of your enemies thing that that sort of he wrapped up with, I thought was really interesting as well because you certainly see that around all the different political machinations mm-hmm. more and more. It's like I I'm just gonna I won I'm now you're done I'm gonna punish you because I won um, whatever side of the aisle you stand on right. It's like it's just everybody has a big club that they're gonna beat the loser with and uh, or beat the winner with. Or either, beat either the way. winner with, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just beatings all around. Yeah, the beatings will happen all around. And it's interesting yeah. because he's, it's like, he talked about, it, it's that power dynamic again, right? It's like, that's how those prisoners, the defeated prisoners that he talks about, that's how they were surviving is they would hate mm-hmm. the captors so much. And it's like, everybody feels in some ways like they're a prisoner to this paradigm. Mm-hmm. And so they're all relying on, hating the other guy enough to survive and like here is this message that we're hearing that like really turns that over and it says we have to love and like really love everybody and we're not even truly human unless we do this yeah. <laughs> i mean talk about a kick in the teeth i mean it's like wow mm-hmm. yeah. um yeah yeah like that's yeah. Like that's the heavier core of this, right? Outside yeah. of the uh, eschatological sort of whatever mm-hmm. overtone, uh, it's that. Uh, 
Yeah, how are we? How how are we to be truly human? I mean, the eschatology in this is is uh, you know it has to be mixed again with what the gospel says is that we have to be ready. Yeah. Um, we can't be like the man that put his treasure all in into one place and and uh, you know and and then he was gone. That's another <laughs> rough one. Yeah. There's you know, a- it's like you oh. know, like whoa. You know, it's like he collected, he spent his whole life collecting his treasure and it was meaningless. Yeah. It meant nothing. Yeah. Because his treasure was not in heaven. His treasure was on earth. Yeah. So, so the two things that I talk about in, in, you know, in confession, you know, this is no big surprise and is that, uh, is prayer and, uh, relationships. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and I imagine people, well, why is, why is Father talking about relationships all the time? Well, it's like, how do you treat your fellow human being? How do you treat yourself? How do you treat God? What, what's happening? Yeah. yeah. Because that's the, that is the down, that, not down, that is the bedrock. One of the foundations of Christianity is this second commandment of loving your neighbor as yourself yeah you know and um without it you're not a man yeah you're not a human being you're you you are you're like a power animal Mm -hmm. and uh, a really smart power animal yeah it's really smart sometimes sometimes not so smart yeah yeah (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's Mm -hmm. well I haven't, I haven't fully grasped it maybe well enough to articulate yet, but I'm listening to this Lord of Spirits podcast on uh, Ancient Faith Radio, which mm-hmm. is really cool. Uh, if, uh, I, if I think of it, I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, Appreciate it. It's deep, but they talk about, like St. Paul talks about the body of sin, and they've really gotten into like, a theology of like what is a body it's not just the meat thing with the water and, mm-hmm. and like it's and really when we sin we are uniting ourselves in a way to like a different type of body like a uh, a demonic body really mm-hmm. in that it is like it's it's the power meat it's mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. the deifying love um created in the image of god reflecting the image of god type being that we're intended to be um see i haven't absorbed that well enough to articulate oh that's okay yeah but you know it's like absorbing the whole idea of sin which is not a word that's used in our culture at all anymore no um sin is missing the mark right you know that's what's what sin means in greek Right. And, um, but sin is doing something, making the wrong choice before God. Yeah. It's so like, that's what sin is. Yeah. And that could be a myriad of choices that you make during a, a given day, or a, di- a given week, a given year, and so on. Yeah. Um, so it, do- it does sort of nudge you towards evil it nudges you towards the fallen body yeah um because the body that we'll get in heaven hopefully for all of us um (laughs) will be you know i won't have a you know uh, i won't have arthritis i won't have Mm -hmm. lots of things you know happening uh you know we'll be it'll be a whole new body yeah you know and um uh but all this happens and it it is so good in the middle that he mentioned this you know and we talked about um when we were talking about theophany about the world being baptized by by christ at his baptism well it's interesting saint um um sophroni brings up christ being crucified um that is the road that we go on yeah um not the road of power the road of hate right 
those roads. Yeah. And then, so, yeah. Man, yeah, that love is is difficult and does involve uh, the tears and mm -hmm. and it's true Christian love is like the anti Disney love. It's well, ag agape is always is always hard to explain to people because what does that mean? Well, it means the unconditional love that that God has for us. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? And for people who are parents, at least I can get them to the point of saying, well, how do you feel about your, truly feel about your son or your daughter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Multiply that by a, a quintillion <clears throat> times. Yeah. Times that. That's how much God loves you. Yeah. Again, because God gave, you, God gave you life. God gave you talents. God gave you everything that you have. Yeah. You know, you're, you're given everything, you know, and um, that's how much God loves you. That's what agape is. Um, eros is desire. It's not a bad word. Right. Philos is the brotherly love, you know, that, that people have um, between, um, between folks. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm forgetting the other ones. Well, there's mother, there's, there's parent to child, child to parent, you know, there's, there's different kinds of love, but agape is the one that we, we need to talk about all the time yeah. because it is so out of this world, literally, mm. Mm -hmm. that people just don't comprehend it. Right. Well, and, and they, I think maybe they, in some ways that, uh, that probably it's like we we grow societally farther from that and so i guess in the in the sort of prophecy uh aspect of the <clears throat> of the video that's what i felt like it was it's sort of talking about it uh, that's how i tend to take that sort of like mm -hmm. later times or last days mm -hmm. or whatever it is it's a well all of this stuff is uh procedural it's a process right mm -hmm. the deification that we are striving for is a process the reverse of that the demonification if we want to mm -hmm. call it that is also a process it's not like you like yell at your wife and bang you're you're doomed it's like that but that's a step in the wrong direction so it's like societally we have moved further and further away from an idea of the enchanted world that is close to God that maybe has more understanding of agape into a more clinical scientized diced up thing which we talked about mm -hmm. ad nauseum episodes ago um and I sort of feel like maybe that's those tears maybe are are us trying to get back to that agape in some way well it is but it's tears for a sinful world mm -hmm. yeah tears for all of these people who are in pain tears for the 460,000 in our country that died of covid tears for the 2 million point three that have died of covid around the world mm -hmm. and uh, tears for people who are starving you know the whole the whole gambit is open yeah um, and people are given this gift of tears to cry for all those people just as monastics are given you know the gift um, to pray for all of them mm. you know um, uh, most of us don't have that gift uh, yeah. we would run out of steam after about you know most of us about 20 or 30 minutes if we had a long list of names or types of people to play for we'd be like uh, <coughs> uh, that was know, long and, okay you know, that was a little too long i'll shorten it tomorrow you know it's like <laughs> you know, yeah it's um I'm guilty uh, of but that. but but each name as i as i've said when we talked about prosca media i told you the story of all the room uh, the romanian monks when i went into the patriarchal cathedral Mm -hmm. each name is a person yeah it's not a you know writing on a piece of paper each name is a person yeah and in in the prosca media it becomes the that 
piece of bread becomes named in that person's name. And then at the end of the divine liturgy, the deacon takes all of those names and all of our names and the Virgin Mary and all the saints, and they're all poured into the blood of Christ, the body, body of Christ, mm -hmm. and all mingled together. Yeah. So <clears throat> that it, that in itself is an act of love. Yeah. You know um, that God has given us, uh, as is the act of of healing, the act of uh, 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 what kind of healing that may be going on when someone is is. Um, dying right um what i mean i've seen extraordinary things happen mm. um miracle things happen um when people are dying hmm. and most of the time it's because they get it and you can see it in their face yeah and you look at them and you know they've got it yeah hmm. and they'll hold your hand yeah. And they'll look at you, some of the, uh, some of those folks, and then they'll die. Yeah. And you know that they got it. Yeah. yeah. And I'll look at the, and I'll look at the, uh, you know, and I'm not saying that out of, out of some kind of judgment thing or hubris thing or that I'm Christ or anything. I'll look at the family member, especially their religious. I said, they've, they've gone home to heaven. Yeah. I just saw it in their eyes. Yeah. You know, Thank so, God. um, you know, and there's, there's love there, uh -huh. you know, and I've told many, many families of patients when I, when I've worked in, in hospice and, and even outside of hospice, you know, as, as a parish priest that this time is really important, not only for your loved one, but for you. Oh, hugely. Yeah. Because you will remember every moment about this for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it, it needs to be re to remember with love and that God loves you and God loves your your uh, loved one and uh, mom or dad or whoever it is and really loves them. Yeah. yeah it really does. Yeah. And uh, that is not a voice that we often hear in um in our culture you know because oh. we have an we have the american way of death we have the, the machinery of death we have the business of death um and um yeah put and it, that's all put it off that's at all, all that's that's away somewhere yeah put it off as long as possible by every means possible mm -hmm. uh it doesn't matter the quality of your life as long as you continue to exist but when that's no longer sustainable by every mechanical means we can summon we'll hide you away somewhere and just do that quietly please it's yeah. a little it's a little uncomfortable for everyone so yeah it's like this is yeah different. it's very uncomfortable because we all <laughs> got to go through it yeah you know and and we need to make a choice do we want to do we want to be like the person that that understands what's going on with it with their life and understands their spiritual life and and it and, and their tears has haven't dried up they understand who god is they understand their their relationship with god mm -hmm. or do we want to be alone now god's going to be there either regardless case. yeah but but people think they're alone no and they're not we're about out of time father but i okay. on that note i'm going to quote another uh contemporary saint who i really like cool Thank you, Reader Mark, if you're watching, for giving me this book. Uh, this is from St. Paisios. Uh, he says, what is there to fear? Death? Death will open the door to paradise, for under the slab of the tomb lies hidden the key to eternity. That's pretty direct. So, I think that's good for us for today. Do you have anything to add to send folks off with all right good well hopefully that was interesting for you guys uh i had a good time father mark thank you as always Me too. thank you <clears throat> thank you again it's good seeing you and good seeing virtually everybody so seeing, else seeing the little little camera both of you <laughs> <laughs> all right guys 
Well, thank you. And until next time, catechumens depart.